He is such a pain. I am. Yeah. <laughs> good morning, everybody. Or good afternoon, I guess. It is afternoon. Um, I hope you've all had a great week. It's been a rainy, stormy, unsettled week here. All week. We've had thunderstorms and heavy rain and then sunshine. And <laughs> it's kind of been all over the place. But thankfully, it has not been hot. We have had very nice. When we've had clear weather, it's been beautiful. So uh, we've been relaxing today is a beautiful day after multiple storms yesterday so absolutely gorgeous today supposed to have the same tomorrow and then more storms on monday so yay we'll get some yard work done this weekend if it kills us <laughs> so i i hope that uh everybody is doing well i know there's been a lot of storms in the u.s um and hopefully everybody is safe and well down there i had um a busy week I've been alone in the studio all week. I have not had a whole lot of time to paint. Um, I, I did manage to paint two pieces this week, but I designed eight. <laughs> but no time to paint. But I designed eight. So we eight. have, I've got eight new designs stacked up. But. You're following the old adage of uh, if it's worth doing, it's worth overdoing. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Anybody that knows me knows. <laughs> it's like cooking for me, you know. Yes. I don't cook anything in small quantities. Yeah. yeah. If it asks for a tablespoon of garlic, it gets two. <laughs> tablespoon. All right. She doesn't measure garlic. I don't measure it. <laughs> that would imply that I measure garlic. I don't. <laughs> I love garlic. <laughs> oh, good. I did have ha Happy Meal this week. Um, I have been... My brain's been going a million miles an hour. I have a ton of ideas. And one of the things that I wanted was a bottle, something with a nice fine point that I could squeeze metallic paint out of. And uh, Deckward has a nice tip, but I find it really hard to squeeze the, the paint bottle. Um, and I found these. These are from Recollections. I ordered these off of michaels.com. Um, pretty cool. I tested one out uh, the other day. I got two packages of these because, you know... If it's worth doing. <laughs> worth overdoing. <laughs> so um, I tested them out. They actually work really well. The bottles are very easy to squeeze, even with paint in them, which makes a big difference as far as I'm concerned. So uh, these are really cool. And I think the retail on these was something like $3. They really were not expensive. I was rather impressed. So uh, these are little uh, 0.3 ounce fluid ounce uh, squeeze bottles with a fine tip precision tip i thought they were awesome and then um i <laughs> i'm kind of obsessed with stamp with uh scrapbook.com these days it's terrible honestly i go on there fill up a cart put a thousand dollars in it and then start deleting stuff <laughs> because i know i'm not going to spend a thousand bucks but um i did spend like 35 this time around and uh, i got some more of that giant washi tape I love this stuff. It's fabulous. So you're going to start seeing some of this pop up in some of my design work because it's just, oh, I'm in love with this stuff. It's so cool. And then I found stamps. Now, these ones are, they're called decor stamps, and they're uh, from the Prima redesign line. I am just, oh, I fell in love with these. Look at this. There's 11 stamps in this set. It was $25 for the set, which is very reasonable, for um, especially stamps. for, pardon me? For 11? For 11 stamps. So there's 11 <laughs> stamps. And check this out. Of course, these are right up my alley. I love this. Anything with bees or those, you know, very Baroque or very French label type things. I'm just in love with it. So, yeah. So that was my happy mail this week. I was just, I was giddy. The only other happy mail I got this week was like toner cartridges. Yeah. Which that, that came made, in this morning. That came this morning. That's about <laughs> the only other happy mail I had this week. So, um, yeah. So if you're at all interested in um, in these clear stamps, if you're obsessed with them as I am, um, go and check out stamp uh, scrapbook.com. I love that website. It's really nicely laid out, and they have a phenomenal selection. Um, I get a lot of Tim Holtz stuff from there, too, because when their prices are reasonable, their shipping is very reasonable, and their selection is awesome. So go and check that out. So today, we're going to be... i got to find a spot for that. It's going to end up on the floor. I know it. There we go. I'll move it. 
Um, today we're painting um, holiday blessings. I was sitting here um, earlier in the week and um, <laughs> I, I have a little mason jar lantern sitting on my desk and it, it's the type with the little string lights inside and it's so cute. And that's kind of where this all started was this little lantern idea. Um, of course, mine are solar powered. They have a little solar panel in the top of the lid. But I thought, wouldn't it be fabulous if those little um, solar panels were gone and then you could put like a candle inside the jar and then that sort of led to one thing and then it led to another thing and this is where I ended up <laughs> was with this little jar with the the holly leaves and the the uh, mistletoe I absolutely love how this turned out I think it's very cute um, then I struggled with trying to figure out what type surface to put on it um, I ended up putting it on this tag but the line drawing in the pattern is actually designed for an 8x10 so you could put it on an 8x10 canvas if you want to or an 8x10 board it will fit perfectly within the confines of an 8x10 um, so if you don't have the 9x12 um, giant tag or a 9x12 panel then by all means use an 8x10 it'll fit beautifully so that is uh, our project for today of course when I was working on this um, it kind of spun off into a few other little things too so I have uh, three or four more designs using the same theme using the the little mason jar as a, a lantern so hopefully um, we'll be doing a few of those in the near future <laughs> and then um, I spent a little bit of time uh, working on um, um, a mate to the little seahorse and I posted that pattern for you guys uh, this morning and it is up there so I take this down without knocking everything down it's this one <laughs> I just watched him ah oh, too busy anyway <laughs> <laughs> That happened like there's 30 a seconds delay ago. yeah i know it happened 30 seconds ago because <laughs> there's a delay and i looked down and i saw him hopping along behind me on the screen so um this is the mate to the uh sea la vie piece and this one is called vitamin c and it's just the little starfish so it this one was really fun to do and it's a great little mate for that one so that is that anything else you want to discuss nope no I'm good okay you goof i am a goof you are yeah i know so um the supplies for this piece are pretty simple there's only one stencil we're using the uh, m40 m square 42 um snowflake stencil to do this uh, i do have gesso in the supply list that's not absolutely essential but it's great for doing some dimensional um snowflakes at the end of this so I'm going to be uh, showing you how to do a raised relief using some gesso and uh, we're going to do some real metallic lettering this time around we don't often work with metallics metallic lettering yeah metallic lettering and then um, we're going to be doing that candle glow which is a, a fun technique to use that to do that um, the glow in the candle so if you guys are ready to get started so am I You can bring it down a little bit closer to you. There, there we go. Perfect. Oh my, nailed it. So uh, this is Holiday Blessings. Um, I think it's rather pretty. And it's a fun one to paint. It's, it's very forgiving. Um, it is not a difficult one to paint. Uh, we're going to do work mostly with reflections. Getting that light, how light bounces off of things. So that we have that, that glow, that soft glow inside it the the jar itself is super super simple we're just doing some line work this is not a difficult piece to paint but uh, it is a fun one to paint so we're going to get started on our jar first and foremost now i'm using a little bit of bahama blue i kind of like the i like this color for glass I, it, this is very simplified glass we're not talking high realism here i gotta bring the brightness down here oh yeah it is a bit bright is it? so i'm going to use a rigger and uh, i also have where is my there's my liner i've also got my liner 
handy here. And of course, I got to use some Joe Sonia fast dry glaze for this. Is that better? It should be. Who is it ever bright? It's the table. I don't think it's the table. <laughs> I think it might be that. I bet if I shut that off, it's going to be really dark. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Not so much. <laughs> I think we might get away without it. Wow. <laughs> so you're going to take a little bit of care in painting in the the glass. Now I've got a fair amount of glaze in my brush because I want this paint to come off that brush smoothly. And that's all it is is just the base coating all of that glass, the edge of the jar, with Bahama Blue. I'm going to switch to my rigger. Taking too long and I'm impatient. <laughs> <laughs> like you said, if it's worth doing, it's worth overdoing. So all of the glass is getting this, just a single coat of Bahama Blue. That blue really pops out on the camera. It does pop out on the camera. We are going to highlight it and shade it. So, so wherever you're going to see glass, and there's not a lot of it, honestly, on this, these borders. Uh, you're using a rigger, yeah? I am. I'm using yeah. a number two. Number two rigger. Dynasty now, foe squirrel. Um, you can. <laughs> Sandy sent me a message wondering who was wrestling with the plastic. It was me. <laughs> wrestling with the plastic? With, with the packaging. It was crinkle, crinkle, crinkle right, right next to the microphone. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> My girl Sandy is a busy girl. She's getting ready for the uh, event in August with SDP in Las Vegas. She's got a special event there. So. Oh, nice. Well, she's yeah. already flinging links to your, your e-packet. <laughs> she was on the ball today. She's uh, Sandy's always on the ball. Um, get this. She is base coating 79 surfaces for <laughs> coming glass. And I think they still have space is available so if you are going to the sdp event in vegas um go and check out sandy's special event because she's got an awesome piece for that absolutely awesome and as sandy if while you're throwing up links if you want to throw up a link to that event go right ahead it's an awesome piece kind of wish i was going but travel right now air travel out of canada is an absolute nightmare uh, somebody won wondering if that uh, glazing medium is compatible with other brands of acrylic paint. Yes, it is. I use it with everything. It's a Joe Sonia product. It's made to work with their, with their acrylic paints. Um, but I've been using it with uh, Americana acrylics, and I've used it with folk art acrylics too, and it works just fine. So I'm just about there. Now, this little bit here is a reflection. <laughs> and uh, it's just a little bit of light in there. And there is some in both corners. So there's a little bit down here. The, you, it's hard to make it out, but there is a little bit down here in this corner. Uh, decorative painting. Def uh. What's that? Decorative Painters Org. Dot com. Org. Yeah. So yeah, they have a uh, a nice little event going on in Vegas, and Miss Sandy was asked to to a special event there. Uh, she's working with Decorate, so it's uh, it's going to be an exciting class. She's got a great piece for that class. Oh man, that 
sensor is buggy. What sensor? Uh, well, I adjusted the brightness and then I turned off the light. Now it's going like, oh, is it too bright, too cold, too hot? <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. Uh, <coughs> second you moved it, it's like, no. Deb Pels, we went to Las Vegas for 10 days. Worst part of the trip was getting through customs in Toronto. I can well imagine it would be. There we go. We had a massive tele telecommunications outage here in Canada yesterday, and I do mean massive. One of the largest telecommunication com companies in the country uh, went down. Some of their, a lot of their customers lost cell service, they had no internet access. Um, it was a nightmare because our Canadian banks also deal with that telecommunication company. So there was no debit services available in a great many places. Um, a lot of people couldn't access their banking, whether it were online or even at an ATM. So it was bad. <laughs> it was really bad. So something in the neighborhood of 11 million people without access to their cell phones or internet yesterday. Yep. Never mind how bad it was for the banks. And people are complaining, why isn't there a plan B? That's a very good question. That's a very good question. Yeah. These companies making bazillions of dollars every year in profits. And I understand these companies have to make profits. It's, but um, if you have that kind of requirement... When the, when the nation needs that kind of service on the daily, mm -hmm. there should be a plan B. So that's pretty much it for the bottle. I mean, it is pretty straightforward. It's just, you know, a few blue lines, basically. And we're going to do the wire now. <laughs> Shows how easy it would be to shut down a country. Oh, yes, yep. absolutely. Also gives you a very good reason to start carrying some cash. Yep. I.e. me. I got to start carrying cash again. Yep. Well, I've... I've gotten used to just using my card. I, well, yeah. I've taken to carrying, you know, $100 in cash in my <clears> wallet. <throat> and the funny part was <laughs> yesterday, <laughs> Dad had cash. And then you had to pick up something and didn't have any cash, so he gave you cash. <laughs> and then uh, he went took the cat to the vet. And he went to be a spill and couldn't, and he yeah. didn't have enough cash left. So he had to come home and get some cash because you couldn't use the ATMs either. Like, nope. So they were everything was down. It was bad. He was a pain in the butt. Yeah, but you know, we were fortunate that we keep a little stock of cash. But it's all good. Don't say that too loud. Well, it's you know we keep a couple hundred bucks in a drawer for emergencies, basically. You know, and everybody should, I think. Or, you know, keep a little bit in your wallet. But it's a good idea. Can you imagine being in a place that's been taken out by storms or what have you? And we've had that happen. Ooh. So I'm painting the wire on this uh, with cobblestone. It's just a little bit of cobblestone. And this is going to be the wire around our jar. Oh, Linda Sofranco says I had to back out of going. Really wanted to take Sandy's class. I'm guessing she. <laughs> oh, oh so sorry, Linda. What are the prizes today? Oh, my goodness. I um, almost forgot. We have. <laughs> <laughs> She's. Ladies we have four Franco. sets of um, Dynasty brushes. That's right. We're doing um, brush giveaway all month. Yep. So each Saturday for the month of July, we've got uh, four sets of Dynasty brushes to give away. And what sets are we giving away today? Um, <laughs> so last I packaged week it was... them all up. They're in the bin right oh, next no. to you. They're already packaged. And ready to mail. Oh, no. And I did label them. Oh, hey. <laughs> there we go. So they're all labeled. It's written with a little 
Oh, that's not one of them. Oh, Terry Green Garden, your pin's on the way. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> the postal meter just updated. <laughs> so, the brushes uh, we have for the month of July, we have some uh, Dynasty Micron, we have some Dynasty Black Gold, and we have some Dynasty Faux Squirrel brushes to give away, and some Dynasty Encaustic. So I packaged them all and then I made sure that I put a little initial on them to remind us of what was in said envelope. Not all of them. It's probably on the edge. There's nothing on this one. Oops. I missed one. I think he enjoys it when I miss one. <laughs> My cron. Micron. <laughs> so are you choosing the brushes Micron. to give away today? What? That's going to be encaustic. Encaustic. <laughs> there we go. So as I said, this is not a difficult piece to paint. We're almost finished the jar. So the lid to this jar right here is base coated with asphaltum. I guess we're doing black gold today. Okay. Don't you can choose. There. I got four black gold ready. <laughs> and I think next week we'll do mic run. Whatever you want to sure. do. Sure. It's all good. We'll do that. So Dynasty Black Gold for today. We have four sets. Each set's got five brushes in it. And there are a variety of specialty brushes. So it's going to make for a nice little set for you to play with. <laughs> and I'm a firm believer that, you know, buy the best brush you can afford. Buy the best quality brush you can afford. And fortunately, when it comes to Dynasty brushes, you get great quality at a reasonable price because they're a very affordable brush, but an excellent quality. So, I am base coating the lid of our jar with mm. Asphaltum. Oh, uh, Diana Swindlehurst got her beef stamp. Excellent. Her hot wax stamp, I'm guessing. Excellent. And she says, thank you, thank you, thank you. You're very, very welcome. Mm. There's a lot of people today were, or in the last couple of days have been posting that they got their happy mail from one of their their prize winnings from watching the lives, which is nice. We like seeing it. And last month, I hope everybody got their prizes from your... They've been gradually showing up. Yep. Yeah. Good. How would you hang this painting? This, I would run a nice big bow through it. I would hang it on my front door in the middle of a wreath. I think it'd be pretty in the front middle of a wreath. If you're going to hang it on a wall, um, I would still put the ribbon or a bow on it. And then um, I would just get one of those little glue-on um, hang tabs that you can put on the back. <laughs> Cat Casey, how does one enter? Uh, usually open door. <laughs> Ignore him. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, all you gotta do is like. Like and share. Like That's and share. all we ask. And you don't even have to subscribe if you don't want to. Yeah. Although we appreciate it when you hit that big red button. Yeah. Uh, I believe they're on Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. If on you're Facebook. on Facebook, just hit the follow button on the Facebook page. There you go. Uh, Andrea George, holy cow, didn't see my... Oh, I missed that. <laughs> holy cow, I didn't see my palette until just now. Oh, <laughs> 13 months. <laughs> 13 months. Yes, my dear. She's right. been a member um. of... Andrea is amongst the very first to join us. 
in the mm. membership group. Renee, you're in rare form today. Oh, wind him up. I swear to God, I want to pat him down and look for the key. There is no key. Yes, there is. I you am wireless. <laughs> <laughs> you're something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm something, all right. What is this? <laughs> you picked up a brush. I picked up a brush that I have absolutely. Where the heck did this come from? What is it? it what does it say? It's called an artisanat classique. I. Is that one of the mystery brushes you got in the mail that one day? No, uh, there's a whole bunch of those in the in there, but um, I don't know where this one came from. Does it's it a white like nylon. It it's a nice little round though. Let's see how it works. <laughs> just like let's try it. Out. <laughs> I just wanted something with a fine point. Reached over to grab a what looked like a fine point. Let's see how it works. Meh, it's okay. It's a brush. How much coffee so far today? Um, half a cup. I'm almost done my first. Yeah. I've had. I haven't even finished my tea, but I've had a half a gallon of water. <laughs> Renee, is your wireless with Rogers? No. <laughs> no. 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 Renee, come down and calm down my 12-week-old mini schnauzer. Oh, my gosh. 12-week-old schnauzer. <laughs> he chewing and biting is brutal. Any suggestions? <laughs> He's teething. <laughs> Give him an ice cube. Give him an ice cube. Cheapest, most easiest cleanup toy you'll ever buy a dog. Ice cubes. It... How big is the cup? <laughs> It's... Ten it's ounce. Ten ounces. <laughs> it's a ten ounce cup. <laughs> and so, it's not really a cup, it's a horn. Yeah, he's got this whole Viking thing going. So he has a horn cup. Literally a cup made out of a horn. Ox horn. Ox horn. Ethically sourced ox horn. Yeah. Ethically sourced. No need to kill the animal for horn. No, there isn't. It actually does them a favor. Yeah. Especially ox. Their horn grows quick. Uh, ice cubes. Uh, go get baby toys. Put them in the freezer. Yep. They're chewing on everything because their teeth hurt. Yeah. And if it's cold, it soothes the pain, and it gives them something to chew. You know those uh, the baby teething toys that we used to get for the kids? They're good for dogs. They're good for dogs. Throw them in the freezer. What color is the candle? The candle is a base coat of country red. Tends to be my go-to red. Uh, for a couple of reasons. One, it covers fairly well for a red. And I kind of like the tone. It's got a little bit of like an orangey undertone to it, which works for Yo. me. Andrea George just sent you $20 for the peppers. Yay! Thank you, Andrea. We like oh, that was the message for the peppers. <laughs> <laughs> I just noticed that. I'm like, for the puppers. Okay. <laughs> we like our puppers. And kittens. And kittens. Miss Soot went to the vet again yesterday. Oh, yeah. And uh, they drew off a, almost a liter of fluid. The, doc, the vet's been monitoring her weight. <laughs> and she's six pounds. Two ounces. Jeez. And that was with a liter. 
So uh, a liter of water is usually about two pounds? Give or take. Give yeah. or take? Yeah. So she's 4.6. Four oh, my God. Yeah, she's her. She's uh, not quite five pounds. How do you stop the biting on my hands and ankles? It's a schnauzer. <laughs> it's going to bite your hands and ankles. Um, it's still young to understand what a yelp is. So anytime he bites you, you make it sound like it hurt. And then he'll uh, control his own bite. He'll develop a uh, bite inhibition. Because mom would probably nip him back. Mom would nip him back. Yeah. Or protest. Yeah. You got to make it sound like you're angry. Yeah. Or the action that they just caused. Yeah. So, either... I don't... I'm not saying bite them back. Uh. But the... Uh, uh, the repercussion of them biting has to be almost instant. Yeah. So... And mom would either nip them back or she would yark, like, snipe at them. Yep. That would be your best bet. Yep. Nothing wrong with, you know, playing with your dog and getting a little mouth play. Yep. Nothing wrong with that. But they have to understand when to stop. Yeah. Like, God has an off switch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I could have my whole arm in her mouth and she could be... Tugging pretty good on it, but she won't break skin. Yeah. I might end up with a bruise, but that's about it. Yeah, well, that depends. Yeah. But... I laughed at that dog yesterday. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> God. She's something else, Miss Dot. She wanted to go outside so bad. She wanted to chew grass. And I took her out for a pee. She nearly yanked me off my feet. So she could go roll around in the grass. <laughs> um. So the leaves are base coated with antique green. I've got one coat on, but I feel it needs another thin coat. I don't really worry about getting it fully opaque for a couple of different reasons. One, I'm going to put two to three more layers of color over top of this. Um, with the shading and the highlighting. So I'm not really worried about getting it fully opaque. Uh, but I do want it fairly even. Ooh. What? Sandy says, gotta run. Y'all have fun watching this beautiful design come together. Back to prepping 75, 75 surfaces. surfaces. Yeah. Oh. Girl is busy this week. Busy! Uh, and guess... that class isn't until August, but... Girl's she's got to be ready for it. She's got to be ready for it. They're going to have so much fun in that class. Uh, there was another one here. How are you enjoying the new colors? I haven't gotten mine yet. <laughs> 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 I am impatiently waiting. Ah. Very impatiently waiting. I know they're going to be here soon. But I'm still. I can't wait. Cannot wait. Oh, so, it's such a black surface that the white balance is way off so yeah it'll it'll improve in a little bit yep. so uh we have a lot of berries on here and we have holly and we have um mistletoe now the mistletoe is actually pretty easy to paint because we're going to be using a little bit of matcha green and a nice round brush i've got a number four and this is just stroke work mm -hmm. i know this scares some people so I'm thinning out a little bit of matcha green. And I don't worry too much about those. See those little berries in there? I don't worry too much about those just yet because um, we can put always put them back in. I'm not too worried about that. But I'm going to um, just do a little bit of stroke work here. I'm going to press my number four down and stroke in these mistletoe leaves. Just, it's essentially a large comma stroke. Uh, what color if you don't have antique green? Um, you know what? Use an olive green. There you go. Yep, olive green will work just fine. Not olive green, avocado. Sorry. <laughs> uh, what was it? You used festive green? I used... <laughs> <laughs> oh, sure. Point out my pitfalls. Yes, um, I have to. <laughs> this is the third time I've painted this piece, by the way. 
have to fish the original out of the garbage. <coughs> yeah, the original is in the garbage. Yep. Um, so she's gone to go get that. I'm going to show you something. Okay, no, you know what? I've been doing this a long time, and but I don't. That does not mean that I get it right every single time, and this is proof. The first time I did this, I did it with a background, <laughs> hated it. So I tried base coating it out. I had the lettering up. I put it on a different surface, and then I just completely pooched it <laughs> with a horrible color choice, and. The horrible color choice was not here and here. It was it was here in the mistletoe and in that holly. It was just hideous. So I started out with festive green on this, shaded it with plantation pine and highlighted it with um, green apple. These greens all together did not work together at all. It looked very garish, almost looked like a cheap Christmas card. It was awful. So I wasn't happy at all with this. Um, but I knew right away what the problem was. So I missed the garbage can again. Uh, How? <laughs> no, no, you hit the garbage can. I hit the garbage can. I just didn't get it in the garbage can. Oh, okay. Yeah. So um, usually when I get the color palette all wrong, um, I just go back to the drawing board and start over. And it, that's the simplest thing to do. <laughs> just keep it for a reference because I mean those mistakes are you learn something from them and one of the things that I learned from that was I mixed too many different greens and they were too far apart so um, hence the reason they did not work so too many values and too many values apart yep not even values I mean they were greens that weren't even in the same family Oh. <laughs> you know, so yeah, it didn't work. So it just didn't did not cut the mustard as they say. Uh -huh. what can you use instead of cobblestone? Um khaki tan will work just fine. Burlap will work just fine. I'm sorry, a khaki tan? Yeah. It's the name of a color. Okay. It's just that seems like two different colors. To me, anyway. Yeah. But. You know your uh, your desert gear? Yeah. That's khaki tan. Okay. <laughs> no, it's khaki and tan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that, you know what I mean, that brown <laughs> is khaki tan. Oh, okay. That brownie gray color. Yeah. yeah. Is khaki tan. Can't okay. you glaze over it to change the colors? Uh, you could, but you're also starting with a base color. And your base color it, uh, will show through all the way along. Yeah. So, yeah. It was just a whole series of bad color choices in that one. <laughs> your garbage is still someone else's art? <laughs> no, it's not. I kind of liked it. It reminded me of old Christmas cards. Don't throw it out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. It oh, it's needed gone. to go. It's gone. <laughs> So um, I've got my holly in, and it was just simple comma strokes of the uh, matcha green. If you don't have matcha green, you can use olive green. I'm going to dry this real quick. It'll probably need to be overstroked, but that's okay. What about the hole in the board? Would you fill it in? This? No. Mm, she needs that. I need that. I, I, I guess you're going to show them what, why? Well, I put a... Uh, a ribbon through it to hang it up or tie a bow there whatever <laughs> I wish it was your garbage man <laughs> <laughs> no you don't I argue with mine <laughs> Deb Bloomfield who makes the name for these colors I'd like I'd like bruising purple baby poop yellow and burnt toast black <laughs> <laughs> Baby poop yeah, yellow? Yeah. You've thought about this. <laughs> <laughs> and bruising purple, I can understand, because that's some. It's going to have, like, greens in it. And... Hey, Faye Reed. Hey, Faye. You're joining us on your last day of vacation. Is she on Facebook? Or... Yeah. Ah. Well, no, she's on YouTube. I'm chatting. That's where I am. 
So all of these berries are going to get base coated with, um, with a little bit of warm white. They are the same color as that candle, but I want them to pop a little bit. So I'm putting a white base down. I am officially out of coffee. <gasps> Tragic. And I don't feel like correcting that problem. <laughs> Strange. So, a little bit of warm white. So when I put the red over top of these white berries, I'm going to get a nice bright red. They're going to pop off of that surface really nicely. And they're going to show just a slight difference from that candle. I want them to carry the color, but I don't want them to look exactly the same. So nice coat of warm white on each of those berries. Just one, doesn't have to be fully opaque. I love painting for the holidays. And my brain has just been going a mile a minute. I, this week alone, did three new printables. So brace yourself, there'll be some more printables going up in the near future. So we have three new printables, and uh, I have eight new designs sitting here that need to be painted. And that's from this week. So some will make it to pattern. Some will end up as uh, projects or challenges or what have you. Some of them might even be racks. But uh, the printables that are up there, I love the printables. And I love that you guys are starting to post them. Um, that you're painting them, they look amazing. That you're doing things with them, I think that's great. That's what they're for. They're meant to get you inspired and so you can have a little bit of fun. It isn't always about you know buying all of the toys and buying all of the supplies. Um, sometimes it's just a matter of sitting down with your favorite colored pencils and just coloring something. I spent a little bit of time this week. Um, I've been rather obsessed with um, junk journaling. <laughs> I don't ask me why. I'm not a paper crafter. Never have been. But um, I saw a young lady that I've been following on on um, TikTok. She does some of the most amazing things with junk journals. They're just very clever and and simple designs but she got me thinking and I'm all about color I love color I love um, collecting up all of these different color palettes and I make collages online on my computer using variety of images and whatnot that I find and um, she did something recently that just sort of got my attention and now I've started collecting junk journaling material because I want to do um, some color collages using junk journaling techniques. And it's just, you know, kind of got my attention. It's just something I wanted to try. So, but I'll warn you now that if you start looking at junk journaling supplies, there's a rabbit hole you can be lost in for hours. Have you ever been thought about a 12 Days of Christmas ornament series? We, I have thought about it. <laughs> it's one of those things I sit down I get as far as like day six and then I kind of lose my concentration so I'm putting just a coat of white on that flame because it's going to be yellow so I want this to be a nice bright yellow Oh, they're wondering what's for supper. I have a big pot of homemade spaghetti sauce on right now. Yes. <laughs> I'm 
Big pot. It's a meat sauce. Lots of veggies. Can't go wrong with homemade spaghetti. Big porcini mushrooms. Mm. I put a lot of vegetables in mine. I like it with a lot of vegetables. Crunchy vegetables. Well, yeah. We don't put celery in our spaghetti sauce. Yes, we do. No, we don't. Yes, we do. Well, then I don't notice it. <laughs> I've been putting celery in our spaghetti sauce for years. No. Yep. Celery, carrots, onions, garlic, red and green peppers. What time is dinner? <laughs> <laughs> I want to do a painting. This is from JL. I want to do a painting for a guy, but not something floral. Any suggestions? Um, we always seem to have like a default for when it comes to painting something for men. It's always either fishing or golf. Um, one of my favorite pieces that I've ever done, I did for a magazine uh, for Father's Day. And it was a gentleman's box. Something that they could ch you know, store their change in, their watch. All the stuff that ends up in their pockets. And uh, I used old black and white movies. What are you chuckling about? I was going to make a comment. Oh? Yeah. He's, I, stuff you'd find either in their pockets or in the dryer. In the dryer, yes. Yeah. But usually their pockets because it's for them to put stuff in. <laughs> I have a jar for all the stuff you guys forget to take <laughs> out of your pockets. <laughs> It can be quite lucrative at times. Oh, I washed your wallet one day. That makes sense. Yeah. But, um, yeah, the the gentleman's box was published in, I think it was Pixelated Palette, about four, four or five years ago. And it, uh, it has movie star faces on it. So it was nice. Humphrey Bogart, uh, James Dean, and... Humphrey Bogart, James Dean, and I think Marilyn Monroe. That would make sense. You you did do a bunch of those. I well I yeah, and I, I do love doing that kind of thing. So I, I think Steve has. He has James Dean. He has James Dean. Yes. Yeah. Um, I did the larger paintings. You had Frank Sinatra. Yeah. Yeah. I had Frank Sinatra and Dorothy. What's her name? Oh yeah. Um, no, you had. Uh, it wasn't Dorothy. Oh, it wasn't no. Dorothy. It was Audrey Hepburn. I had Audrey Hepburn, right. Yes. Yeah, I had Sinatra and Audrey Hepburn. Yeah. So, yeah. So, there's... If you're looking for something like that, if they're, I don't know, into old movies, or if they're into movies in general, that's a really great subject matter. And it uh, made for a nice... A nice box. My husband still uses it. I like barber signage. Yes, and I have two of those designed. Vintage signage for a barber shop. Yeah. Yeah. Which I gotta go to go to one and get the beard trimmed. Is yeah. uh, if I do the trimming myself, I'm gonna end up clean shaven again. <laughs> it's like getting your hair done. You know, there's something very relaxing about having somebody else do your hair. Mm -hmm. Not so sure I'd trust somebody to shave me, but... There we go. So I just overstroked those to fill them in a little bit better. Oh, a pipe box. Yes. Or oh. a to tobacco box. Yeah, a tobacco guess. box would be nice. Um, dragons. <laughs> dragon. That would be a good one. Yeah, you've never done a dragon. I may not be uh, your average guy. I know I wouldn't mind a primitive scenery of folk art, naive winter scene. That's also a nice one. Doing the traditional primitive type yeah. designs. Very nice. Did you say which issue of Pixelated Palette? I, off the top of my head, I don't know, but I could easily find out. It was a Father's Day issue. I know that. You just don't know what year. I can't remember. I can pull it up on my computer and make it into a pattern. If you can't find it. 
There we go. So I'm going to leave these berries unpainted for the time being because we have to do some shading and highlighting on these. And um, I think we are just about ready to get started on the fun stuff. So um, let's start with the holly leaves because those are, those are my favorites. I like the holly leaves. Now, when I'm shading leaves like this, the color I'm using is Plantation Pine. It's my shading color for those holly leaves. And I'm going to use a 3 8 angled shader, if I can find one. I had one here. Oh, I can't. What are you looking for? Oh, I'd have to go back issues. Yes. Um... They go back as far as 2016. Yeah. I think it's probably about 2017 or 2018. Okay, so let's go to 2017 first. Was it a cover? No, no. it wasn't a cover. So I, I actually should do something for the magazine. I haven't done anything in a while. So, um, I am going to load a 3 8 angle with a plantation pine. And we're going to shade the base of the leaf. This is always my first step when it comes to shading leaves. Is just to shave that shave. Shade. <laughs> Good grief. The bottom portion of the leaf from about that first hook down. It's like so. Is it a June issue? Uh probably May or June, yeah. Okay, so the June issue was actually you were the cover artist for that. That year. What was on it? Uh, the skull with the crown. That would not have been it. So we're thinking 2018 now? Yep. 2018. July, August. Oh, there was no September issue? Oh, there it is. September. <laughs> December, January, April, June. June or May? Yeah, it's either May or June. This is Father's Day. I would say it would be May. So that dark shadow goes towards the base of the leaf. Right in there. And that's our first shading on that holly leaf really seeing it clearly on there but it's not a super dark shadow anyway no it wasn't me let me try june because they give you a breakdown of who's in the magazine yeah. for that month i could be completely wrong about the year too okay so it wasn't 2018 well and it wasn't 2019 i know that so it may have been before Okay, so 2016. <laughs> nope, you weren't in the 2016 issue. <laughs> I think it may be 2019. Don't think so. We'll have to have a look. So once you have that shading done at the base, you're going to start shading down the center vein. March 2017. He's going through every issue. <laughs> so I like having that little curve. That's what that initial shading at the base of the leaf does. It helps 
imply that curve so you get a nicer longer curve in the bra in the leaf gives you a little bit more realism and a little more dimension there you go yep march 2017 was the yeah march 2017 who got who sent that uh gail woolsley good job gail Oh, uh, what size tag are you using? This is a nine by twelve. We do have them on the website. I love this size. It's just ideal for a bunch of things. So I've got my shading on my leaves. So the next step is to add some highlights to these leaves. Now I do this in two steps. We're going to thin out, I'm using a little bit of matcha green. And I like to start on the points. A little too much water in my brush. So we're going to put a nice little float down the center vein and come right out to the point of the leaf. That's what's cracking me up. He keeps looking and everyone's saying March 2017. He can't read the comments and look at the same time. No, I'm looking at my phone. <laughs> I wasn't looking at the comment section. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it seems when it comes to um, painting men's things for men, it always seems to come down to the same thing. It's, you know, hunting, fishing, car racing golf I like none of those things <laughs> <laughs> it always seems to be the same thing um, I've seen some really beautiful pieces done where it's uh, you know classic cars one of my favorite artists for that type of work is um, Debbie Cotton she does the most amazing Closer old to the trucks and things like that. Oh, yeah. Oh, she does these beautiful vintage trucks. She's just remarkable. Motorcycles. Yeah, I... Yeah. I like motorcycle stuff. I like old motorcycle signage. Yeah. I like signage. I like signage. That's a vintage thing. I love old signage. I think that's why I like lettering so much. Is it possible you could... Can you do a lesson on how to create a design? Sure. If you guys are interested in that, I'd be more than happy to do that. When I stopped to comment, I missed steps. That's why I rewatch later. <laughs> That's why we archive every live. Yeah. So I'm just floating in the highlights. I put a highlight down the center vein and again on the opposite side on those points. So down the center vein, I like to come out and then I'll do the same thing on these points here and come up. I don't worry about going over that shading in the center because we're going to do that again. And then I have a look and see if they're nice and bright, if they're bright enough. So down the center vein, sometimes you need a little more paint. <laughs> but I like the points to be a little brighter. Points on these leaves. Down the center vein, out to the point. <laughs> so they look a little messy at first. But they will smarten up. That sensor is losing its mind on that black. <laughs> it's such a deep black. Yeah. That it doesn't know whether to brighten it up or darken it. There's a lot of work creating designs. Yes. Writing the instructions. I like creating, just don't like making patterns. Um, for me, 
sometimes I actually have my instructions written ahead of time. <laughs> simply because I already know how I'm going to handle each individual element. <laughs> I like it when that happens because then I know, okay, this is going to work, that's going to work. And then if it doesn't, then I can just make simple changes. That, that works out well. For me, what takes the, the longest time isn't even the painting. It's creating the, the overall design. Because it's nothing for me to do five, six <laughs> separate line drawings until I get where I want to be. That's not unusual <laughs> at all. <laughs> so, uh, Elizabeth Allard, mm -hmm. uh, I must tell you, I absolutely love the bag with the skull. <laughs> I'm glad. I won, but I have a friend who absolutely is in love with all of your skulls. <laughs> so I told her I would gift it to her. Uh, she will enjoy it so much more even though I enjoy it <laughs> she will enjoy it so much more thank you again for my winnings you're very welcome <laughs> Nancy okay I liked and shared spinning time <laughs> <laughs> well I want to while I'm waiting for those leaves to dry I'm going to throw some red over top just because um Remember I was telling you how that red is going to look a little bit different because of that white undercoat. This one, a little more toned down, less, not quite as bright. And then when you put that red over top of that white, look at that, just pop. So you get a much brighter um, tone of red because it's not being affected by the black. They're wondering if you have that size tag in stock. I, I do, yes. Okay, I think you have to update the, the website. I did update it yesterday. Oh. Some are saying that you're out of stock already. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's entirely possible because there's like nine, ten orders just popped up on there. Yeah. So. <sighs> <laughs> I will have some, some more order today. They might be out of stock. <laughs> <laughs> we might be. But yes, um, the fellow that I order those from is very quick getting stuff to me, so I can have some more by Wednesday. Uh, Virginia is asking, were you born able to draw or did you go to art school? Uh, both. <laughs> <laughs> she did both. I did both. Um I was one of those kids that I doodled and drew on everything. The margins in my notebooks, the margins in my books, which did not go over well. I did the same thing. Yeah. I, uh, there was nothing that was sacred. If there was a blank space on a piece of paper, it got doodled on. Yeah. By the time I hit 12 years old, my parents are sort of like, well, we got to find a more appropriate outlet for her. So they sent me to uh, private art lessons. And then uh, encouraged me all the way through school to just keep drawing, keep painting. Um, by the time I hit high school, I was doing university level courses. And then um, I studied art for five years, six years. Traveled all over Europe studying, so. And I did not do any decorative painting or toll paint, toll type painting until I was much older. And I had, you know, small children at home and of course no budget for art. And a friend of mine, I would dabble with this and that. And a friend of mine asked me to paint a cow, mm -hmm. a little wooden cow that her husband had made for her. And um, she had a magazine. And um, I said, sure, I can do that. Well, I sanded the paint off of that thing probably five or six times. Because I didn't have a clue how to paint it the way that they were describing it. I had never learned anything about that style of painting. So um, we had a local toll shop and I went down there. And uh, I walked in, asked a couple of questions. The next thing I knew, I was taking a class. And um, 
it took me about two or three weeks to figure out what they were getting at. Once I nailed that, then it was just I was off to the races. So, And then I started teaching about a year and a half later. Uh, Diana Swindlehurst, can you tell me how long the side is before it angles off to the top? Oh, on the tag? On the tag? It's eight and a half inches. What? Yeah, on the tag. That bottom side before oh. it tapers off. Oh, okay. Eight and a half inches. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I measured it. Okay. <laughs> I wondered what you were doing. So I'm going to dry this real quick. So do you see how much brighter those little berries are? with that white undercoat. So I'm gonna dry that. And then I'm gonna grab my angle and we're going to finish off these leaves. I'm going to come back into my plantation pine and we're going to intensify that float down the center vein. So, and what this does is it creates some really nice contrast on those leaves and gives us a nice sharp definition down the center vein. And you can deepen shadows as you go. I know you have all run into this problem when you're highlighting something that uh, you come to a point where you just cannot get the highlight any brighter. And there is a nifty little trick for that. Instead of trying to brighten your highlight, deepen your shadow. All you have to do is increase the contrast. That's all you have to do. So once you have that contrast, the highlight looks brighter. And so you get this nice sharp definition on your leaves. And while I have that paint out, we're going to do the same thing to those holly leaves, or not holly, the mistletoe. So I'm going to put a float, nice dark float at the base of all of these leaves. I'm going to separate a couple of them too while I'm at it. It's a little float right here, just to give this a little depth. And in behind, <laughs> Renee likes neons for brighter highlights. I do. Yeah. I think it makes. And you know what? The a neon on this would look great too. Yeah. So I'm going to dry that real quick. Now we're going to do the same thing that we did with the other leaves and just pull a little float up the center, but I'm stopping short of the tip of the leaf. This kind of gives the the leaf a slightly rounded or a thicker feel. So it's not a perfectly flat leaf. So there we have our shadow. Let me dry that. Nope, oh, Don Lavelle got my package today. Love it. Thank you so much. Oh, you're very welcome, Don. Anyone know of any tutorials for painting a bison? Yes, Glennis Moore. There you go. Uh, go and check out Glennis Moore's uh, website. If anybody can show you how to paint wildlife, it's Glennis. She's just remarkable. And her work is extraordinary. So I'm putting um, just a little highlight at the tip of these. I'm just a little bit of thinned warm white. Just to round out the tips of those. Gives them a slightly shiny look. And then when it's dry, you're going to put a highlight opposite that shadow with that thinned warm white. And it's a fine float. Don't overthink it. <laughs> Look who's talking. <laughs> <laughs> Don't overdo it. The queen of overthinking it. <laughs> so that little highlight going down that center vein, it rounds out those leaves really nicely. How do you make it look fuzzy in the other one? What do you mean? 
Those leaves are typically like have like a very fine. No, uh, they're more waxy. Really? Yep. But you made it look fuzzy on yeah, that one. Yeah, that was because I screwed up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> There's a reason why it's in the bin. <laughs> so we have um, a couple of little pine spruce boughs on our piece. And I'm going to do that with, I chose these colors because, you know, jewel green. This was a new color last year. It's such a beautiful green. <laughs> it's on the teal side. It has a nice... Uh, a nice green tone, but it has a little bit of teal in it. And then I chose teal mint as a, one of the lighter values. And then we've got a little bit of Bahama blue, which will work fine. I'm going to use my Tenot liner for this. And I'm going to start with a little bit of that <laughs> gorgeous green. And I'm going to pick up, so it's a tip load. So I've got jewel green on it, and then I put a little touch of the teal mint on the tip, and I tap them together. Uh, Jamie Logan is wondering if any of your patterns come as a printed packet. I don't have a printer. Yes, I do. Quite a few. And you can request one. If you want it, just simply send me a message. We'll be happy to print it for you. Hmm. Warn you, there is an additional cost. Yeah, because we have to charge postage and... Oh, but yes, there is a section on the website for printed patterns. So I just put a stroke of that color in right there and there. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this side. It's a little bit shorter. And this is the center vein for our pine boughs. So you're going to thin out some of that gorgeous jewel green, and we're going to start making almost a feathery appearance. So I'm pulling strokes coming out from the center vein. Get a little more glaze in my brush. I'm not coming off. There we go. So we're just pulling out a few fine lines off of it like that Miss Killerin is wondering if uh, how your hands are feeling this week my hands actually are feeling much better this week much much better <laughs> anti-inflammatories and resting the bloody things goes a long way yeah <laughs> funny it's not like somebody told you to do that before no yeah. shush <laughs> did you have an epiphany <laughs> well it was getting to the point where somebody was going to have to take care of a little of my personal hygiene uh, are I'm you good. volunteering uh, nope. no well <laughs> uh ch -ch -ch. there was a couple good questions here uh one of them being have you ever done a book i i have I've done several. <laughs> <laughs> um, I did one book with the, my first book, actually, with the incomparable Doxy Keller. Uh, she was wonderful to work with. It was a little intimidating um, doing your first book. You're terrified. Uh, but I had, uh, Doxy was just remarkable. She was an awesome lady. We had a lot of fun doing that book. And um, I did two books in fr two books in French, and then I did the same two books in English. Um, those were published here in Canada. Um, a lot of them shipped to France. The French language version yeah. went to France. A lot of them. Um, and uh, but there wasn't a whole lot of books being done in the last few years, so I haven't really done any more since. Do you have any hard copies or? I don't. Hmm. I have one copy of of uh, the book I did with Dr. Keller. There's some pieces in it actually that would be fun for a live. Mm, there we go. Look at that camera just freaking out, eh? So this is the book that I did with Doxy. It was called Trendy Textures. Um, 
and I look at it now and go, oh my. But uh, yeah, these were fun, easy to paint pieces. <laughs> we used a lot of texture mediums, obviously. Um, but yeah, this was the first book I ever did. I'd love to do this one, the Chianti one. That would be fun. Yeah. And yeah, so it was it was a fun book, but I think this one is out of print too. It, it, it's kind of a memento. It's a memento, memento. But um, it might still be on the Viking Woodcrafts website. I don't know. <laughs> Where can we find your books? Um, luck well, uh, with luck, because most of them are out of print. I think all of them actually are out of print. You should reprint. I was thinking actually of of self publishing, uh, a few, a, a few of them. Mm. But we'll see. I don't know. Just another thing to put on the uh, <laughs> the burner on the list <laughs> on the burner. Have you ever had a shop and lived somewhere besides Canada? I have had a shop. It was called the Faux Store. And I closed it in two thousand and eight, and then we moved back here to the East Coast. And what was the other question? Have I lived somewhere else? Besides Canada? Besides Canada? <laughs> yes. Um, I've lived in seven different countries. <laughs> <laughs> All um, of them in Europe. Eight different states. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah. never mind. Seven different countries, eight different states, and on three to separate continents. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> three separate continents. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I've lived in a few countries. Define lived. Uh, more than three months. More than three. Oh, okay, then I lived in Afghanistan. Yeah, you lived in <laughs> Afghanistan. Uh, so yeah, I, I've, um, as they say, I've been around. Oh no, I lived in Germany. Yes, you did. I've lived in Germany, France, Italy, England, the United States, Canada. I've never lived in the States. I did. For a little while. I've lived all over Canada. Yeah, you have. Pretty much. But yeah. Uh, just to clarify, I grew up in a military family. And then I married military. So, uh, yeah. Been there, done that, got all the t-shirts. So are you settled? I, you couldn't get me out of here now with a hand grenade and a pry bar. Unless it had a view of the ocean. Unless it had, yeah, exactly. Unless I could walk out my front door and walk into the ocean. That is so, the only way she's moving. Yeah. So I'm going to add highlights to these pine boughs with a little bit of thinned teal mint. And then I'm going to do it again with a little bit of thinned Bahama blue. And if you find the Bahama blue a little too bright, just throw in a little bit of the jewel green. I do love this jewel green. I think this is just a beautiful color. Oops. I've lost all my Bahama blue. There it is. So I love that little bit of Bahama blue in there for a highlight. It just makes things so pretty. And keep it fuzzy. Don't be neat and tidy with it. You want these to have a a bushy look because they're bushy. It's pine boughs, spruce boughs. Not really pine. It's more like Bruce, blue spruce. Mm -hmm. Sherry D. The internet made painting more accessible to folks, but there is something about holding books and magazines in your hand. I totally agree. I was I, lucky enough to be published in Paintworks before its demise. Do you know what was really cool when it came to Paintworks? Was okay. that I had the cover of the very last issue. Oh, wow. And it was my first cover. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what made you decide to use that blue with these colors? Um... I wanted a little punch of uh, vibrancy and this teal. It's a very wintry color. It's a very cool color. It needed a little of that contrast 
to have that cool in there. And it also picks up the Bahama blue that's in the glass. So I was able to carry that color through it. I like to carry colors. It's why my, I don't know if you've noticed, but my supply lists when it comes to colors are usually very short. I don't usually have 25 colors in them. And the reason for that is that I like to carry color around the surface. That's why I use the same red. I just changed how I applied it, but it's the same red. So there are my pine boughs that you like. And then I'm going to go over to my berries. You notice that I didn't base coat these ones yet. I'm going to go over to my red berries. And I'm going to take a little bit of lamp black. Now the black by itself is going to be too dark to shade this red, so I'm going to pick up a little bit of the red and mix it in with the lamp black, and I'm essentially going to make a very dark red. Hmm. Paintworks Magazine is still up. It's just not pr publishing or printing yeah. magazines. It's all digital now. It, no. Paintworksmagazine.com that's not the same one. No? No. It's not the same one? Paintworks Magazine was a publication of Amer all American crafts. And that company no longer exists. No. Oh. So. Paintworks Magazine Facebook page. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm just putting a little float of that red and black mixture on the right, uh, the left side of the candle. Ah! What did you do? Oh. And then I'm going to take that same mixture and I'm going to put a shadow on the lower left side of each of those berries. And I'm going to get it as close to the edge as I can get and still let a little bit of that red show through. I don't want to come right to the edge, but close. Super close. Close as you can get without going right to the edge. That's what it was. <laughs> what? What? Well, that um, USB thing. Uh-huh. It fell. Uh-huh. It hit the circuit breaker on the power bar. Uh huh. Okay. So I was wondering why the uh, low battery light came on <laughs> on the laptop. Okay. So, we good. Do they still publish the SDP magazine? Yes, the decorative painter. Yes. I'm I'm with you. I love to hold a book in my hands. That was the other happy mail I got this week. You got a book? I got books. Books. <laughs> oh, you were on I'm, that outlet site again, weren't yes, you? Yes, I was. <laughs> oh, um, oh, where I put them? I believe her first language was English. Mine? Yeah. Yes. Then it is German. Second language is German. Yeah. Second language is German. She understands French. I don't speak it well. <laughs> <laughs> I speak bad French, too. I grew up about 20 minutes outside of Strasbourg. On the German side of the border. So she knows all the slang. <laughs> <laughs> Farmer slang, too. <laughs> Bauna Deutsch. <laughs> Do not speak Hochdeutsch. Hochdeutsch? Hochdeutsch. That's not what you said. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. <laughs> Platte Deutsch? What? Platte? Platte? Platte Deutsch. Platte Deutsch. Platte Deutsch. Low German. Low German. Bauern Deutsch. No, it's Platte Deutsch. There's Hauptdeutsch. Yeah. And Bauern Platte Deutsch. Deutsch. Platte Deutsch. So, there are a cluster of berries on 
the mistletoe here. Now the nice part about doing this is that at any time, if I need to deepen a shadow, or if I need to adjust something, I can. Just because you've float shaded and highlighted doesn't necessarily mean that it's finished. It just means that it's finished for now. So we're going to base coat these berries just with a little bit of warm white. So my friend Sheila has got uh, a new blog post up and um, I went and read it the other night. She sent me the link and it was just oh, such a nice thing for her to do. She gave us a nice little shout out about uh, M Square stencils. And uh, like her, I have a collection too. <laughs> but so while I'm, I'm putzing around on her blog. I was scrolling through and I'm finding all of these things that she's done that I, you know, I know she's done, but I haven't seen in a while. And I saw her tiger. Her tiger is freaking amazing. But she had done a, an earlier tiger in acrylics and then she had this newer one done. Unbelievable. And it was only a couple of years difference between the two, but the advancement of her skill set in just such a short period of time is just staggering. Um, Shirley Heckler, mm -hmm. why do you leave an unpainted edge on the berries? I leave that little, it's not unpainted, it's just exposing a little bit of the base color so that when we put in the highlights on the berries, having that little line of very thin line of red actually helps imply that it is spherical as opposed to just being round. So it's as if the light is coming through the skin of the berry. So it works very, very well. It's just a simple little trick to get a good effect. So I've got my shadow on my berries and I've left that little tiny space. We're going to do the same thing when we put the highlight on and I'm using a little bit of warm white. I'm going to thin it out quite a bit and blend it out quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to put my highlight on in the same fashion. So I'm going to leave just a thin, narrow space of the background color, the base color showing through. <laughs> Kelly Davis asks, how do you get so much mileage out of a single loaded brush? This. There you that go. That glaze medium. It it's, acts like an extender. It lets the paint flow off of the brush. So, yes, you can get a lot of mileage out of it. She says she spends more time loading up my brush than I do painting my piece. Yeah. Try using a good quality fast dry glaze. Like, I use the Joe Sonia's. And it doesn't have to be that brand. You can use any brand, but... Um, I like the Joe Sonia's, and you don't need to have a whole lot of it in the brush, but it does make a world of difference when you are trying to float and put highlights on instead of reloading the brush every 15 seconds. Mary Lou Harris has got a technical question. Shoot. I'm confused on with the term float versus shading or highlighting. Can you explain the difference? Yes, I can. Float is the method that you're going to shade or highlight with. And you can shade and highlight in a number of different ways, but in toll painting and in decorative painting, we tend to use the term float, and it is the method by which you apply the highlight. And float is when you have a gradient of color on, say, a flat brush or on an angled shader, and you're going to have that gradient applied to a surface. I'm simply using floating as the means of applying my shading or highlighting. But you can highlight and shade a number of different ways. It doesn't have to be floating. Hi, Soot. Hi, Sutters. Miss Soot is awake. No 
her. No, oh. she didn't want to be picked up then. Oh, oh there it is. Hi, it. Can you guys hear her? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, our Russian is back. And he's spamming the chat. All right. Yeah. We'll get rid of our little Russian friend there. Unless somebody wants love chat. I don't know. <laughs> oh, I can't do it through here. I have to do it. Jerk is back. Yeah, he is. We're going to get rid of him, Judy. Hang on. Oop, Sheila's on him. <laughs> Sheila's kicking his butt. So now that I've got a little highlight on those berries, I'm going to put a final impact point. Now, you can do this with white, but let me show you something really fun. Um, white will work, but a little bit of sunny day will work better. And I'll show you why. Because this one has got the white, and this is the sunny day. The sunny day is going to give you a better highlight because you've got yellow light coming off of that candle. So if I use a little bit of sunny day for that light impact point, it gives it a little bit more authenticity. And I'm putting my light impact point so that it lines up with that candle. So it gives us a better look. There we go. So uh, that little bit of yellow on those berries makes a huge difference. So I've got one with white right there. And then the rest are all yellow, but that light... That white one does not work very well, so I'm going to make it go away. I'll just put a little dot of yellow over top. So I'm going to come into this flame now, because before we start doing a whole bunch of stuff out here, I need to get this flame base coated. So I've got a nice, neat, smooth coat of sunny day over top of our flame. Lucinda Arenda. Hello. Was just notified that my great grandson great grandson was just born. Oh my goodness, congratulations. His name is Ashur. He is six pounds fifteen ounces. Nice. That's a good size baby. Well congratulations on being a great grandmother? A great grandmother. Wow. <laughs> so for the center of this flame, we're going to use a little bit of orange flame. I know. Who knew? So I'm going to start right there and just a little teardrop shape in the center of our flame. Come sir. And then we're going to come down to the center of our candle here. I'm going to pick up a little bit of orange flame and a little bit of country red. I'm going to mix those two colors together. I want to make a an orangey red, a very orangey red. Um, let the cat out before she becomes vocal again. Okay. And we're going to just base coat this space at the mouth of the candle with that orangey red. It is going to look a little obnoxious for a little bit. And I'm going to pick up a little more of that orange and we're going to paint that little stripe at the back right there. And I'm going to dry that real quick.
and then I want that bit at the back to be a little bit brighter. So I've got, oops, a little bit of that orange flame. Go over top of that. I want this to be a little bit brighter. And then I'm going to put a highlight on that back line of this candle. But this time I'm just using a little line. I'm not using a float. I'm just using a stroke. So a little line of sunny day back there just to highlight it a little. Just at the top edge. And then we're going to use that liner to stroke in the wick. And it's just the simple, it's just a little line of black. I never make it straight up and down. I just, I don't, don't know why. I just don't think it's very uh, authentic looking. But we're going to float the bottom of this candle with a little bit of sunny, not sunny day, with a little bit of saffron yellow. I love this yellow. It is super vibrant. And it's going to make our flame even more so. So just a float of that saffron. It's a U-shaped float, just a little bit of color at the base of the flame. And I'm going to dry it, and then we're going to put another little float, a little bit shorter, in the same place, but this time with a little orange flame. And it's a little bit shorter. And then while you have that brush loaded with the orange flame, you're going to add a highlight to this side of the candle. And across the top, those little bits at the bottom, I'm going to put a little highlight there as well. It's not pretty. It's not perfect. It doesn't need to be. It's just a little float. And I'm going to walk this float to about the one-third line, which just means I'm going to pity pat it until it comes to about one-third of the way across. And there we have some light on our candle. And then we need a little reflection on that wax that's in the center of the candle there. And we're going to do that with just a little stroke of sunny day. And brighten a few things if you feel they need it. And I want a sharper point on my flame. There we go. I wasn't happy with the point of my flame. Want to take a little what? break and spin the wheel? Yeah, it's a good idea. Right on. Because this is coming together very quickly now. Ah! Oh, we got no wheel open right now. Uh -oh. Give me one second. I need the wheel. I think I got this wheel here. <laughs> That's not the right wheel. Oh my goodness. There we go, we got our wheel. Um, uh, there we go, that's a little bit more appropriate ad for what we do. What is it? It's for Adobe. Adobe. Unleash okay. your creative superpowers. <laughs> That would be nice. I don't know where mine go half the time. <laughs> <laughs> They're here somewhere. Okay. Copy. 
paste. So while he's spinning the wheel, I'm going to just quickly base coat the opening in the jar. With what color? With warm white. Ah. So copy, paste. There we go. We have a hundred and ninety four names. Nice. It's a good day. And oh. Let's shuffle a little bit. Bah. Bah. Shuffle, 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 shuffle. We got people like Marjorie Eaton, Linda Morgan, Jan, <laughs> <laughs> Melissa Jones, Linda Safranco, of course. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, let's. Wheel of Darkness. <laughs> the Wheel of Darkness? <laughs> Sheila. No. Oh. Let's spin the wheel. Thanks to all of you. I can't believe I'm old enough to have great-grandchildren. 45 on the inside. 78 on the outside. <laughs> Elizabeth Barden Burt Burn? Bard Elizabeth Allard. <laughs> <laughs> She won a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, she just won again. Yeah, right on. And what did she win? Um, set of uh, black gold. Oh, excellent. Nice little set of Dynasty black gold. And it's Barden. Bardern. Burden. Ooh. Six pounds, 15 ounces. That's a good size baby. I had one that was eight pounds, 15 ounces. That was me. No. No, that was doing me next. That was, yeah. I was the small baby. Yeah, you were seven pounds, four ounces. All right, so Elizabeth, boom. <laughs> Set of five brushes. Set of five. Set of five. That's Dynasty set Black Gold. Dynasty Black Gold. Those will be going in the mail on Monday. Let's spin it again. Let's. Boom. Oh, my goodness. <sighs> Robin Richer. Thank you. Excellent. So Robin's got a set of black gold as well. I'll do one more and we'll save one for just before we <laughs> sign off. Okay. All right. Third one goes to... Dick. Debbie Matthews. Nice. Debbie is in Texas. Is she? Yes. She used to live in the Northwest. Oh, when yeah. she moved to Texas. Or she lived in Texas. Debbie I can't remember Matthews. which. Her best friend lived in the Northwest. Anyway, the first time I met Debbie Matthews was at uh, Seattle Convention. Boom. So. In Seattle. She was oh, yeah. an awesome lady. Yeah. Nice. Um, Back to painting. Yeah. So what we're going to, uh, we've got this great little candle done, but it's not really doing much until it starts, you know, throwing some light, which we have to make it do. I'm going to use a medium point blender. This is from IPC. It's a Dynasty brush as well. And we're going to add some glow because we need some glow. And I'm going to start with a little bit of Sunny Day. This brush needs to be almost dry, so I'm going to scumble it really well on my palette, a tiny, tiny amount of paint. And I'm going to have the point of the brush to the edge of that little dotted circle in there. And we're going to just work back and forth. It's a dry brush, so it's just, it's a soft thing. 
and you're going to pull that color back till it's about a half an inch from the edge of that flame. I don't want to come right to the edge and it's a half circle. We want to maintain that circle and that means bringing that color right down onto our candle. It has to overlap that candle. And then I'm going to do that again. Pick up a little bit of color. Scumble it well. And then have that point to the outside edge. And remember to come right down onto that candle. And that color is going to come about a half an inch from the edge of the flame. So you're going to get a little halo around it. Karen Jones. Good afternoon, Tracy and Renee. Mm -hmm. Hi, Karen. Finally got to check in. <laughs> so once you've got that first layer on there, it's the more opaque color. I'm going to pick up a little bit of that orange flame, just a touch, and it gets scumbled the same way. You want to get that brush to be almost dry, and then you're going to go right over top of that first color and that's going to give us our glow you can pick up a little saffron yellow so now we've got our little glow going but we want to carry that glow out to the outside edge which means coming past that little line so there's going to be a little gap and you're just going to very gently dry brush some light onto the back wall of that bottle. Just like that. And then you're going to do the same thing on the other side. In behind those berries, don't forget to leave that space. You want that little space where that line is. Now, if you really want to see some fun texture show up when you're doing this, try rolling your paint on with either a fabric roller or a high density roller, putting on your base coat, or slip slapping your base coat with a really coarse brush, like with that um, um, fugly brush and just leave lots of little brush marks in, in the surface and it'll give you some really interesting textures when you're dry brushing. So again, I come right out but I leave that little space. I'm going to pick up a little more sunny day because I want to brighten this a little bit. There we go. So there is our glow on our candle. Now, there is a, re a brighter reflection that goes on the back wall of that candle, of the jar. And I'm going to do that with a little bit of orange flame. And it's a very small amount and you're going to blend it out well. We don't want this color full strength. You're going to come about a half an inch from that first curve and just follow that shape on the background and that's it. It's all you need to do. It's just a tiny bit of color back there, just enough to create an implied reflection. So if I do it with a little yellow it might stand out a bit better. There we go. So that just implies that the light is reflecting off the inside back wall of the bottle. So while we were spinning wheels, mm. I base coated the inside of this with um, a little bit of warm white and I'm going to put a coat of Sunny Day on there. One should do it. Mm -hmm. If you ever want a good snack while painting, mm -hmm. try Dot's Homestyle Pretzels. Yummy. 
I don't normally like pretzels, but they're freaking awesome. <laughs> I love pretzels. I'm not a fan of crunchy pretzels. I like soft pretzels, but I really uh, like crunchy pretzels. I like freshly baked pretzels. So, I've got a coat of Sunny Day on there. And then we're going to add a little bit of heat from that candle with a float of orange flame right there. Now I got a little heavy handed with it the first time. Surprise, surprise. So it should, the brightness of it should visually match what we have down here. So there we go. Coming along, coming along. So now we have to concern ourselves with, uh, I was going to say the lid, but we still have one more thing to do with our uh, candle, and that is to put a highlight on the belly of the candle. Now you can do this a number of different ways. I'm going to do it with a dry brush and a little bit of sunny day. And I'm going to pull the color this way half circle because it is a curved item and I only want a little bit right there so I'm just using my dry brush to put in a simple highlight on the belly so now we've got that jar done we've got the leaves up here done we do have some berries to finish out we'll do that right at the end and then we want to do some shading on our lid here and I'm picking up just a little bit of lamp black and I'm shading underneath my leaves here with that lamp black okay, I'm talking about pretzels now <laughs> we've already discussed food and puppy training so I want to put a float of lamp black in that groove doesn't have to be a perfect float and I want one right here to define the edge of that Oof, not even a good float let alone a perfect one there we go it wasn't quite dark enough I did not have enough paint on my brush there we go There we are. So we have a nice little shadow in there. And now we need to put a highlight on the front leading edge. And I'm going to do that with a little bit of Sunny Day. I'm using Sunny Day because we have this nice soft yellow light everywhere. If I used white, it would be too garish and I don't want that. It would be harsh and it wouldn't work with what we've already done. So I'm just going to put a dry brush on each of those ridges of the jar lid using just a little bit of sunny day. It just helps define the shape of this jar a little bit. And I like this point blender for this because it does give you a really nice dry brush. And it's such a simple way to get it. There we go. Look at that. So now we've got shape. I am going to bump it up a little bit. I want to um, brighten it just a touch. We need a, oops, perhaps not quite that much, but there we go. I have a little too much brush, much paint in my brush. But that will do. And then we have to put a highlight at the back of the opening. And I'm doing that with some Sunny Day and my liner brush. And it's an imperfect. I don't want a perfectly straight line. It needs to be a little irregular back there. Almost as if it was dry brushed. There's your highlight at the back. 
super simple way to get this candle light showing up. <laughs> Jessica, I missed the food talk. Do it again. <laughs> we haven't really discussed food all that much. Um, I've made a big pot of spaghetti sauce. Renee told me he didn't really like celery in his spaghetti sauce and he's been eating it for years. So, yes. I just don't think it belongs in spaghetti sauce. It sure does. Apparently I'm wrong. <laughs> so we have a few little details to knock out. And um, one of them is these white berries. I'm going to shade my white berries with a little bit of Bahama blue. And it's another one of those things where I carry color around. And again, I come short of the edge. I'm going to dry that. And I'm going to use a little bit of a schfaltum. And I'm just going to float right over both with a very thin float of a schfaltum. It's just going to tone those berries, give them a little more dimension. And as I did for the red berries, I'm going to highlight with a little touch of that sunny day. So that last little impact point is just a little bit of sunny day. And are we grilling chicken tonight for supper? Oh, you are. Okay. Yeah. And we are grilling chicken for supper. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Cool. Mm. So we only have a few more little, little details to, to contend with. And I'm going to start with a little bit of lamp black. And I'm going to add a little bit of asphaltum to it. I just want to warm up this black a little bit. And we have to shade all of these little areas on our wire where, they, where things overlap, where they go under. I'm going to Mernie's house. Why? They are hmm. making homemade burritos. Oh. Where you at, Marnie? I'm coming. I want a burrito. Renee likes burritos. I love burritos. I don't make burritos. I don't make a whole lot of Mexican food. I love Mexican food. I know. That's why we're having taco bowls this week. <laughs> taco bowls! <laughs> Homemade mac and cheese. Oh, yummy. Mm. When it's homemade, it's the best. Never gonna be a fat man, skinny man. <laughs> <laughs> so I just shaded uh, all of that khaki tan with that lamp black and asphalt and mixture. And all it does is just sets it back a little bit, gives a little more shape. And then to highlight it, I'm going to use a very thin line of warm white, but I'm going to put a touch of yellow in it. Some people puree their veggies into their sauces? Yeah. What? Central Maine? Oh, you're a hop, skip, and a fart away. So I'm just putting in a little highlight with my liner. And it's just a mix of a little bit of sunny day and warm white. You can do it with just warm white, but... I kind of like the yellow tone that it gives. So, little stroke. Don't worry about being neat and tidy. It doesn't matter. So, there is our highlights. So, I'm going to come over here and finish out these little berries down here. So, I need a little bit of country red. <laughs> oh, oopsie. What is this? I saw an Italian cooking show that real spaghetti cooks noodles in the sauce. Ish. Ish. You, you par cook them, like you boil them. Yeah. And then just before they're al dente, you take them out, you put them in a smaller saucepan, and you spoon your sauce on top of the noodles and mix it up. Yeah. And then you serve it on a plate. That's how it's supposed to be done. Yeah. But most people just cook the noodles all the way through, toss them on a plate put some sauce on top serve it that way mm. but 
Wait, I like how my mom does it though. <laughs> she tosses the noodles in hot butter and garlic and parsley and yeah. then puts the sauce on top. <laughs> <laughs> the best. Yeah, you can can cook your noodles. Oh yeah, there's <laughs> all kinds of different ways you can do it. I just um one of the best things I've ever seen. It depends. If it's homemade pasta, fresh made pasta. Yeah. Is your sauce is cooking, you put that into a dish and then your pasta comes right out of that boiling as just as it hits al dente and they drop it into the sauce and yeah. toss it in and then, oh, it's yummy. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Mm. So yeah. You can use an immersion blender to smooth out any lumpy things in sauces. Yep. yep. I have an immersion blender. You can. Yep. I am not one for smooth sauces. I prefer them to have some body. Smooth sauces are usually meant for stuff like breads. Yeah. And something dippable. Yeah. I much pastas, prefer. no? You gotta have some Yeah, I like the being able to taste individual things. Yeah. And I bought some really nice porcini mushrooms, so... Mm, yeah, we're not blending that. <laughs> no. <laughs> no one can beat Mom's cooking. You're darn tootin'. As long as she likes to cook. Yeah. If Mom doesn't like to cook, <laughs> chances are nobody's going to like what she makes. No. Okay, so I've got my highlights on my little berries. I just wanted to finish these out. So we need to uh, start doing some of these finer details and one of my favorites is this. I know I don't have to do it but I do it. I just like how it looks. I thin out some of my matcha green which is my highlight color on all my leaves. And I like to finish the edges of my leaves with a thin, fine line. I find this gives the leaves a nice, sharp, clean edge. And because it's a color that I've already used on them, it doesn't, it doesn't get garish. And it can punch up highlights really nicely. And it gives your leaves a nice, sharp, especially holly leaves. You know, Holly has that sharp, clean edge, and I like a sharp, clean edge. Uh, Subron, one likes angel food, the other cheesecake. Oh, kids. Okay. Um, you can mix the two. <laughs> An angel food cheesecake. I don't think that would work very well. It's a thing. It probably is. It is a thing, just like there is rel red velvet cheesecake. Yes, I know there's a red velvet cheesecake. That is probably the only type of cake out there yeah. that I only require a small piece. Yeah. Because it is so rich and decadent yeah. and requires milk. I have had a craving for the last little while. Not necessarily because I want to eat it, but because I want to make it. <laughs> okay. I want to make a blueberry cheesecake. <gasps> I will not stop you. I know. It's actually blueberry lemon cheesecake. Oh. So it's, you know. I, and if you don't like it, then, you know. I know. I, I, it's not a matter I'll of liking it. it. It's <laughs> I, I enjoy the process of making it. That's all. And it's a baked cheesecake, not a chilled one. I prefer a baked cheesecake to a chilled. Okay. Hmm. New York style. Nice and firm, but oh. May, um, Some leaves. Oh, some leaves you do squiggles around. These are plain. How do you decide which to use and wh um, when? Most of the time, that's on the spur of the moment. I wanted these leaves to have very crisp, clean edges. 
Um, if I want them to look softer, then I use the more squiggly lines. Oh, I must have missed this question before. When you say thin out, do you actually mix the medium with the paint? Yes. No. You can mix it with it, or you can just load the brush and blend very well. Ooh, got them all talking about cheesecake now. <laughs> You're welcome. Chocolate chip cheesecake? Eh, no, that wouldn't do it for me. Me, personally, I believe cheesecake should either be done with a fruit. Yeah, or nothing. I won't say nothing. I'd see, and I love a good New York cheesecake just plain oreo no i don't know what it is i it's the graham cracker base it's oh my favorite I've... thing on cheesecake <laughs> <laughs> if you just give me the graham cracker base i'm yeah I'm, I'm good it's like the base for your um pineapple squares yes i know i could eat that by itself i know <laughs> the pineapple is just awesome and the whipping i mean i could eat that with a spoon it's that's that pineapple and but my favorite part is the graham cracker base <laughs> it's the main reason i want them <laughs> plain cheesecake is awesome i do i a good slice of new york style cheesecake with nothing is just oh mm -hmm. to die for with a good cup of tea or coffee mm -hmm. yum and I have had good New York style cheesecake in New York at a New York bakery. There's nothing like it. The real deal. <laughs> Butter, graham crackers, sugar. What's not to like? Exactly. <laughs> oh, Robin Storm celebrating 14 months. Awesome. Awesome. German cheesecake. Is that like New York style? <gasps> German cheesecake is... Yes uh, and no. no. <laughs> it's few and far between. Yes and no. Um, German cheesecake is... Oh, it's richer. They do something with the cream. I don't know what. Yeah. So, I am just about finished with all these little whirly gigs and... All the little uh, tendrils and vines. I'm a fan. I like little whirly gigs. Somebody asked me why I put them in one day, and I said, they're filler. They're meant to fill up some negative space. So, just going to take that same green, and I'm going to connect my berries with a nice little stem. And I like to have one come off the last berry. It just, that way that just doesn't stop short. Um... When I was in Tennessee, mm -hmm. I was working on a on a military base, and I didn't get much of a chance to actually, you know, go see the civilian world. Mm -hmm. But there was a diner, and they did apple pie. Yeah. And it was country style apple pie, so it had big, thick slices, big, thick crust. Yeah. Really tasty. Lots of cinnamon. Yeah. But it was the scoop of vanilla ice cream to go with it. That was like the perfect dessert in uh, my mind. Yeah. Oh, you can't beat to that. me. My favorite ice cream is vanilla. I mean, the, of all the flavors out there. All right. But a good quality vanilla ice cream is yeah. and especially But a diner baked apple pie with a scoop of vanilla ice cream. There's a place in the Northwest. Um, that Deb and I have been to on numerous occasions. You get a really great breakfast there, but their specialty is pie. <laughs> they have pies, every flavor you can imagine. Mm. They make pies. I wish I could remember the name of it, but I had a slice of their apple pie one day, and they, you have the option. Do you want a scoop of vanilla ice cream or a slice of American cheddar? Oh, I haven't tried that yet. Oh. I haven't tried the slice of Let cheddar. Let me tell you, I had it pie. with both. <laughs> Oh, did you? <laughs> I had a little bowl of ice cream and a piece of cheddar because I had to try it. And it was just the tart from the cheddar 
with the sweet of the apples is spectacular. Uh, oh, there was a good question, apparently. I'm pretty good at self-control. I can have one or two cookies a day and behave. <laughs> <laughs> there was a good question. I'm, <laughs> I'm gaining weight just listening. <laughs> you and me both, sister. Nothing like a rich, creamy vanilla ice cream. I, you know, there is nothing like a good bowl of vanilla ice cream. Oh. <laughs> how do you decide how much to sell a piece like this? I have friends who would like to purchase one I have done. Um, well, you have to take into consideration your surface, the cost of your surface, and the cost of your time. And I don't worry about too much about the, the cost of the paint because that's you know, minuscule in comparison to everything else. But um, I try to take into consideration that um, for me to paint this piece, I could do it in a couple of hours. But right off the bat, that puts the price of a tag like this at over $30. Because you're buying the surface, you put your paint into it, your time. So, yeah. Twenty-five to thirty dollars, I wouldn't take any less for, for something like this, because it's there's a fair amount goes into it. So, <laughs> my dad used to say, "Apple pie without cheese is like a kiss without a squeeze." <laughs> Okie dokie. I'm going into a diabetic coma. Oh. Well, I have about ten pounds of blueberries in my freezer that I have to use. So I've been. And I believe there's a cheesecake in my future. <laughs> <laughs> yes there is so if you notice there's a, like a little horizon line back there I like to do that with just it's just light that's all it is that's back there so I'm just putting a, a little float along that line with a little bit of sunny day it's just light it's that's all it is it's a little bit of light coming from that candle so it's just a loose weak float and that's it so we have our leaves done, we have our berries done, we have all the vines and the tendrils and everything done. Aside from, you know, some cleanup work, um, punching up a few highlights here and there. There's a few little things I would adjust, like on the wax and whatnot. But our next step is this lettering. And this is the fun part. I love doing this type of lettering. So I'm going to clean up my palette because it's, it's tragic. It's a mess. And I'm going to get my gold metallic paint. Love Chat has returned. Who's that? Love Mr. Chat. Love, Love Chat. Punt his butt out. Yes. He's gone. Yep. Hello from Kentucky. Hello, Carolyn Edwards. Hello, Carolyn. I baked cheddar cheese right into my apple pie. Oh, my. Say what? Oh my, that sounds good. What's that? Gail Wolseley said she bakes the cheddar cheese right into her apple pie. I, I think it's the flavor thing, right? You put yeah. cheddar cheese, that contrast, that sharp cheddar with apples. Oh. Yeah, but I, I think it's something you have to add later. Baking it in changes the flavor profile completely. Yeah, I don't know. I, th might, I think it would. Because the flavor profile is fabulous. <laughs> Just there's some... I was so shocked because it didn't really appeal. <laughs> okay. I seem to be missing a brush. Oh. Um, when you were in OKC, did you ever try Brahms ice cream? Yes, I <laughs> did. <laughs> and? It was wonderful. Yeah? Well, they make it with full fat cream. It was oh. just to die for. And I had... That's the kind of ice cream that just fills your mouth, oh, yes. right? Well, and and mm. my guilty pleasure when it comes to ice cream is butter pecan. I love vanilla. It's my favorite. I could but see a it. good butter... I had a bowl. Oh. A bowl? A bowl. A whole bowl? A whole bowl. <laughs> we went to this place. It wasn't oh. far from the hotel anyway. I Oh, yeah. I had a whole bowl. <laughs> It was such good ice cream. <laughs> the one I had was anyway. It was a full, full fat. It was like just the most creamy. Worth it. Oh yes, <laughs> it was worth it. 
I've come to the conclusion there are certain things that a really good food is one of them. You should never, I don't think you should ever deny yourself really good food. Wait, we got a, we got a birthday? We got a, what? what? Linda, what? Linda, who's having a birthday? Uh, this should be a great birthday for me. My birthday is Tuesday and my hubby anniversary is tomorrow. Oh my goodness. Well, happy well, anniversary. Well, happy anniversary. And happy early birthday. And a happy early birthday. Hopefully they spoil you rotten. You deserve it. Okay, where's my... I think we should spoil her too. I think we should too. Linda does a tremendous amount for us. What can we send her? We'll think of something. <laughs> we'll think of something, Linda. <laughs> That name, all I can think of is that viral video of the kid, Linda, Linda, <laughs> Linda. <laughs> Linda, listen. Listen. Every time oh, I hear that so name, I'll, I get that picture of the kid. Yep. And he's got to be like, what? Oh, three? Three, three, or, three or four? four? Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's priceless. Hilarious. So, the color I'm using is uh, 24 karat gold. And I'm using a little bit of the um, Josonius and a number zero rigger. You can use a number two, but I wanted to use a number zero. Mainly because it's the only one I've got. It doesn't look like it's been through the wars. <laughs> what did I just read? <laughs> what? I like rum raisin ice cream, but I like so many flavors. Like Shaw's Unicorn Fart Ice Cream. Okay. There's a uniform... Unicorn Fart Ice Cream. Oh, it's probably 30 years old now. You know, I, I liked Butter Pecan, but one of my... When I was a kid, my favorite was called Tiger Tail. They still make it. Tiger Tail was made by um, Brookfield Dairies yep. back in the day when I was a kid. I loved tiger tail ice cream it's the licorice isn't it it is the licorice yeah yeah so i've loaded my brush with 24 karat gold i'm using a zero rigger i want to tap the brush flat so that i get a nice square chisel edge and i don't know where to start where do i start i'm going to start down here on this s so i touch to the top of the letter i'm going to press down till it opens up and fills the space and then Pull the brush back up onto the chisel edge so that I get that nice smooth pull. Now the trick to this is getting that full distance in one pull so that you're not, you know, constantly doing this to get that paint in there. Oops, there we go. Oh goodness, I made a mistake. There we go, up onto the chisel edge. Fill the space, up onto the chisel edge. Chisel edge, down, up onto the chisel edge. It does take a little bit of practice to get that motion of when to lift the brush when to release it but it does come with a little bit of practice so on the chisel edge press down till it fills the space and then bring it back up onto the chisel edge I had a little too much glaze in my brush that time around Now, all of those little connecting lines in there, we'll put in with the extra long detail liner so that we get a really nice fine line. Now, when you're doing the lettering, you can do it so that it's in behind the 
the wire in that or you can have bring it forward either way is going to work I'm going to have mine forward I just kind of like the the fact that the lettering is you know coming towards you I just felt it worked better but either one is fine So I'm going to dry this so that I don't smear gold paint everywhere. This one actually um, comes together fairly quick. So on the chisel edge, press down, fill in the space, and then come back up onto the chisel edge. Oop, my brush didn't open. There we go. Did not have enough pressure on my brush for that. I'm a sucker for um, Dairy Queen soft serve. Like, I like soft serve. Yeah. Like their stuff for the blizzard. Yep. Just fill a cup of that. I'm good. <laughs> it doesn't yeah. need toppings, but no, I like. I like it plain too. I haven't had a blizzard in years. I haven't had Dairy Queen in years. My favorite used to be the Peanut Buster Parfait. Oh yeah, that had. Pecans and peanuts. It was all peanuts and caramel and Yum. whatnot. That one was good. And then they came up with that, um, what was that thing? The score bar oh, lizard. <laughs> that's a good one. Yep. Uh, what brush are you using for the lettering? This is a zero rigger. Uh, oh. Patrick, I never know how to use my gold metallic paint. Now I see that it, <laughs> that using it for Christmas themed lettering could be very nice. I love gold metallic paint, especially for the holiday for holiday items. Um, the only problem with metallics is a lot of the time they don't cover very well. <laughs> but the 24 karat gold from the uh, the media line. This is one of the Closer best metallics there you go. I have ever used. It covers so well. I can thin it out quite a lot and, and I still get really nice coverage and that nice metallic effect. It is a really good quality metallic paint. I do have a touch up because I managed to smear some gold paint. So I am going to have to do a touch up but I have to turn this around. Oh! little inside scoop on the peanut buster parfait. What's that? They've added health bar to it. Ooh. What's health bar? Health Oh, you haven't had a health bar? No. <gasps> it's delicious. What's a health bar? It's a health bar. It's okay. like a protein bar, but it's got like all the nuts and oats and all, oh, the, okay. all the all the goodies. Like a granola bar? Kind of like a granola <laughs> bar, yeah. <laughs> okay. But it's healthy. <laughs> really? <laughs> er, er. <laughs> er. Healthy -er. Healthier. -er. I'm gonna Ish. eat. I'm gonna eat a half a pound of ice cream. Do you really think I care? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, when I traced my line drawings on, I missed something, which was the cross on the H. So I'm going to have to freehand this one. Uh, Barb is wondering what's the difference between riggers and liners. Uh, okay, that's a great question. Let me show you. I'm going to grab a rigger. I'm going to set this aside for oh, a second. Oh, Heath bars. Heath bar. What's so, a Heath bar? I've had health bars. I don't know what a Heath bar is. Okay, this is a liner. This is a script liner. So look at the point. See, it comes to this little razor sharp. That could take an eye out point. It's you know, especially this one, it's a black gold, really nice liner. It's got that nice sharp point. And when you press down on it, I'm going to grab some black here so I can demonstrate this because I think it's an important one. Okay, some black paint on my table. 
Oh, Heath bar is a candy bar. Oh, okay. Equals score. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Never heard it called a Heath bar. I, that's a new one on me. Yeah. So when I press down on a liner brush, I get a rounded point. Now, if I take a rigger brush and I press down, I get a square point. I get a square edge. When they form a liner brush, it's built very much like a round. So even, and I'll take a round just to demonstrate. So here's a round. It has a point just like a liner brush. And I press down and I get a teardrop shape. It has a round end. So when I press down on that brush, it forms a teardrop like that. Liner brush is built the same way. When I press down, it forms a teardrop. It gives me a rounder point going this way. When I do that to a rigger, even though it's shaped like a liner, looks like a liner, when I press down on it, I get a square edge like a flat. So it is built with a chisel edge, just like a flat brush. So I can do things like this. Chisel edge. So that's the difference between a liner and a rigger. They're, although they look very similar, they're, the hair in the ferrule is arranged in a different way. So even when I press it out like that, you can see that it's square. It has a square chisel edge. And when I press out a round brush or a liner brush, I get just like a round, I'm going to get a round point. So hopefully that clarifies that. So a Heath bar is English toffee with nuts covered in chocolate. Yummy. Like a score bar. Like a score bar. So it's going to kind of like, we had a, what was it? Uh, crispy crunch. Oh, it, yes. Yeah. Yeah. We had crispy crunch, which was similar to that. So I've got my gold. I'm just going to finish my swirl. I didn't finish my swirl because I got busy talking. <laughs> About brushes. About brushes. <laughs> Everybody's going, I need a rigger brush now. These are fantastic. For doing lettering, they're out of absolutely fantastic. So I'm going to use my 10 aught extra long detail liner and I'm going to load it with the gold and this is where I do all of my little little things. This is where I connect things. This is the other benefit to using that Joe Sonia's fast dry glaze is that I can do line work four days. It sounds like health bar would ruin ice cream. He, a health bar would. <laughs> no, not to me. Mm -hmm. I like, I love granola bars. Mm -hmm. There's certain protein bars that are, that should never see light of day, but they're good for you. Okay. Yeah. Some are. Some are. My favorite well, ones are I, the one with the I, yogurt. Oh, see, now I'm with you there. I li have always liked those. So we need a connector between this S and the rest of that. And that's what I love about a good, good liner brush. Especially these. This extra long <laughs> detail is just a great brush. Jessica is going off. Have a great weekend, Jess. Backyard's calling her name. Oh, gardening. Yeah, the garden needs her attention. <laughs> so do mine. Do you have riggers in stock? I do not, but you can get them at thebrushguys.com. And we have a coupon code for you, too. So. Tracy M. Use the coupon code Tracy M. Capital T, capital M. Yep. 
It'll save you a little cash. They're not an expensive brush either, which is nice. So that liner brush is just using it to connect my lettering. What series of brush are you using? I use the Dynasty Faux Squirrel for the rigger, which is the series 1827 from Dynasty, and Dynasty Micron, which is this one here. Doesn't have a series number because it is its own series. So there's my lettering. So we the only thing we need to do to this lettering is to add some highlights to it. And I do that with a little bit of orange flame. And again, I thin that out with a little bit of that Joe Sonia's. And I use that liner brush and I'm going to put it on the inside edge on the lower left of each letter. I want it there because this is where our light source is this candle. So all of the light is going that way. Yeah, if you're in the U.S., go to the Brush Guys or Sandy McTeer. Yep. Sandy McTeer carries the riggers as well. Yes, she does. So you just continue to put nice little highlight of that orange if you find it's not bright enough for you don't be afraid to put a little bit of sunny day on there first I'm just not thrilled this is not covering really well there we go so it's just a little stroke that little bit And Maureen Baker, yes. Yes, Maureen Baker is a great resource. If you're looking for the new colors, she has them in stock too. The top of the B. Yes, there's a spot there I missed. Ah. And I do love my orange. So you would just continue through to put your highlights on all those letters. I need to finish off this because it'll bug the hell out of me there it's bugging the hell out of people there I know. <laughs> <laughs> so i'm going to dry this real quick so each of the letters gets that highlight and i'm going to stop for that for the time being because we're getting a little long on time and i still have a couple of things to talk about so so the fun part in this is doing some of the detailing it looks although it's pretty it looks rather meh a little wanting so uh, I need just to give it some fun detail one of the things that I love doing is adding snowflakes all it does is just take up a little visual space a little bit of that negative space and there's two ways you can do that so you can do that with um, just your uh, stencil brush a good quality stencil brush and uh, some paint or you can do it with some gesso so I'm going to show you a couple of fun little tricks to finish this up and one of them is with this um, this technique just a roll a ruler and I've got my gold paint pen I love these this one is the deco color Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Still got some in it. Is the highlight on the lettering on the gold or the black? On the black. It just meets the lettering. Okay. I think I had one pen that was just...
Are you able to go an entire class without getting paint on your sleeves? No. Why would I do that? No, I'm, I'm saying that it's possible. No. You haven't gotten any paint on your sleeves no? yet. Wow. It's a minor miracle. I might have to fix that. I might have to fix that. So I'm going to draw a line. I'm not taking it all the way to the end. I'm going to stop short by about an inch. There we go. Now I'm using a steel edge ruler with a cork back because I don't want this ruler to touch the surface. I'm going to dry this real quick mm -hmm. um, so I'm not smearing gold paint everywhere. Who sells the gold pen? Amazon. Amazon. That's the cheapest place you're going to find them. They come in a set of three and they have uh, two gold and a silver. Now I'm going to cross my line and then I'm going to bring it up until it just stops short of the letter. So I have a little X in the corner. Doesn't have to be big, just a little one. And then I'm going to move my ruler up and I'm going to start just above the letter and I'm going to stop short about an inch from the edge, like so. How long do you wait before you seal the gold paint pens? Um, actually, these ones dry very, very quickly. So you can seal them within the same day that you paint this. Within minutes? Minutes. I like to dry mine too, so. And again, I'm going to cross my line and I'm going to stop short of my lettering right there. Oops. Robin, you are far too generous. What? So, Robin Roche. Richer, sorry. Oh, she wanted to spread the wealth. I just received a prize yesterday and would like to spread the wealth. Well, that's very generous, Robin. Thank okay. you. So we have two to give away. Nice. Consider it done. So I'm going to pick up. And just as it reaches this corner here, I'm going to stop. Right there. Ta-da! And then I'm going to come down to this end. And I'm going to put my line. And I'm going to stop about an inch from the edge. This one is going to stay there. But this one... When it's dry, I'm going to put my ruler down, line it up on that edge, and I'm going to slightly cross there and slightly cross there. And there we have our, I call it a matchstick border. And then we're going to do snowflakes because I love this part because I get to stencil. <laughs> So there's a couple oh. of different ways you're going to do it. I'm going to show you both ways. One, we're going to stencil just using a little bit of paint. Sandra Ryder says, such a beautiful painting. I just found you. Oh, my goodness. Well, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> welcome. A, lot of, a lot of great people come and watch every week. Oh, yeah. Nice. So I'm going to put uh, one snowflake up here just because... It needs it to balance out a little bit. And the other thing is you can cover up any little things that you don't like by using this. So I'm just using a circular technique to go. You're off screen. Of course I am. There. <laughs> so I'm applying warm white over my stencil. Circular fashion. Change directions frequently. So that you get a nice uniform snowflake. And then I like to bring a couple of little ones into the mix so I want to drop some down here they do not have to be fully opaque don't kid yourself they don't have to be so I'm just going to put two little light ones in here I don't want them to be too heavy so they fill up space rather nicely and then I think this one I just want a little snowflake in here again just to 
take up a little negative space. <laughs> Why would she use a dome stencil brush when she has her own stencil line? <laughs> I have is that one of your signatures? Or? This is not one of my signatures. No. Um, my signature stencil brushes are primarily for working on textured surfaces and fabrics, things like oh, that. Oh, right. So, um, but this is the one that I use. This is the Dynasty Stencil Pro. I like these because one, they're synthetic. Two, they're practically indestructible. They get a ton of wear. These have seen better days. Still work like a dream. So if it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's my, <laughs> my motto. So we're going to put a couple of snowflakes down here in the corner and we're going to use a slightly different um, technique for them. I'm going to position that stencil and I'm going to tape it in place because for this I do not want it to move. So I'm going to use a little bit of painter's tape and I'm going to put that in place just to hold it in place. Uh, well, Patrick says I have to go. It's 8.40 p.m. here. Oh, my goodness. Time to have dinner. Thanks so much for the class, Tracy, Renee. Everybody have fun and enjoy the rest of your weekend. Take care. Hugs. <laughs> have a great weekend, Patrick. Okay, I can't find my Jessa. So I'm just going to have to use something else. What am I going to use? I'm going to use some heavy gel. This is a fun technique, and I need some glitter. Shush. Shush you now okay. before you have an opportunity to moan. <laughs> um, the gold paint pen. Yeah. What is the brand name on it? It is a deco color. Deco color. Yeah, extra fine liquid gold opaque paint marker. I love those. Extra I, gold? Yeah. I love these ones, too. This is the premium. This is the big one. Same paint great it's a great marker now if i can find my palette knife we'll be laughing there it is okay so you can do this with gesso you can do this with texture medium i'm going to do it with a little bit of heavy gel medium just to show you so heavy gel medium is thick Um, this one will dry clear, so you have a couple of options. You could throw a little acrylic paint in this to tint it if you wanted to, but I do not want to. Instead, I'm going to put a thin layer of that heavy gel over top of my stencil. And then I'm going to scrape away the excess. I don't want to have 10 pounds of it on there. And then I'm going to carefully lift my stencil. Look at that. So we have a raised snowflake on there. And then I'm going to put one more on there, same type, but down here. And I'll put a thin layer of that medium over top of that as well. And then carefully remove that. And then I will set that aside. Now, while this is still wet, you're going to take your glamour dust or your favorite glitter. Not everybody likes glamour dust. I love glamour dust. I hate it. Gets everywhere. It's everywhere. So I'm going to put a generous amount on top of those wet snowflakes. Now here's the thing, when this dries, they're going to dry clear. So we're not going to have a white snowflake, but we are going to have a crystallized one. So it'll have all the sparkle. And I'm going to grab a piece of paper. We need a piece of paper. And put this down. And then I'm going to tap the edge like this. All this does is just seat the glitter in the snowflake. Holy. Yeah. And now we have glittered snowflakes and they're raised. So they are slightly higher. 
and then they have that great sparkle, of course. So we let that dry. It only, it only takes about 15 to 20 minutes for this to dry. And then they will go crystal clear as they dry, but will be left with this nice sparkly snowflake in the back. So it's a fun way to add a little bit of dimension to a piece and a little bit of interest. Um, it kind of gives you the look of embossing powder like you would see on great greeting cards and whatnot. But um, it's just done with your favorite stencil and a little bit of heavy gel medium. Yeah. Who makes the heavy gel medium? It's This one is from Decor Media. It's a heavy gel medium. You can use a Golden Makes one. Um, most acrylic paint companies have a heavy gel medium. It's essentially just added to acrylic paint to create texture and dimension. But in this particular case, we're just using it by itself to do that. Um, if you don't have a heavy gel medium, you can use a modeling paste. You can use any texture paste that you have on hand. It will do the same thing. Just put your glitter on while it's still wet. And that is how you paint Holiday Blessings. Of course, um, the one thing that we have left to do for this piece is to spatter it because I really like the look of that, you know, that little extra snow. It just adds some interest to the background um, and just brings everything together really nicely. I'm going to use a fugly brush. I got another one. And uh, some clean water or glaze and <laughs> a little bit of warm white I'm going to thin it out a little bit and we're going to spatter this surface how much you spatter is entirely up to you I like a lot for this type of thing just because I like the look of it I think it's fun and then we'll dry that hey, boom. and then all you have left to do is to sign it now, before I varnish this, I'm going to take my, um, my black eraser, go around and erase all of the graphite lines, and clean it up a little bit. Oh, there's a good question. What's that? Will the glitter still sparkle if you seal the piece? Yes. Yes, and it will. Becca Buckner says, can't wait to paint Halloween. Oh, well, it's coming, because I got to... <laughs> I have a couple of things... On my doodle board. I have a zombie bunny. He is a zombie bunny. <laughs> He's quite tickled with his zombie I bunny. I like zombie bunny. <laughs> I like that his like button eyeball is hanging out of his head. That's a, yeah. There was actually a socket there. Yep. <laughs> I think it's brilliant. I think it's awesome. Okay, so uh, the only thing I have left to do for this is, you know, clean up a few graphite lines, but um, take my gold paint pen and ten, sign it. Ten dollars from Robin Richard. Nice, Robin. Thank you. For the puppers. puppers. For the puppers. And that is Holiday Blessings. This is a fun one. This is a fun one to paint. I enjoy it. <laughs> I love the dimensional snowflake. Love it. With white gesso and, and glitter, it looks just freaking amazing, but I really do love the the heavy gel medium one, too. It's going to look really good when it's completely dry and varnished. It's going to look great. Robin Storm is asking if we could paint Oleander tea yet. Oh, yes. The pattern is up on the website. Wasn't that the one that... Uh... I taught that last year for SDP. Oh, yeah. right. That's why, because I had to wait. Oh, right. Teach it again. Yes. But, yeah. Conditions. Yep. Uh, but yes. I'm a switch camera. Bloop. I hope you guys have fun with this one. Oh, it's, my God. That's bright. It's not a difficult. There we go. Oh, my. It's not a difficult one to paint. There's a lot of uh, individual elements in it, but it's not a hard one to paint. And it is fun. I love anything to do with the holidays, and I love using stencils to embellish them. And I just find that, especially in a black background, it can, because there's so much contrast, um, it needs something to soften it. So nine times out of 10, that's why you'll see a lot of stamping or stenciling and whatnot in my black backgrounds is because I find black by itself is just a little on the garish side. So uh, I love putting 
that that detail of throwing in some stencils and some dimension and lots of glitter and it's the holidays it's supposed to sparkle why is that camera so bright i don't know give me one second <laughs> i think i can fix it now <laughs> well it wasn't like that before oh okay <laughs> no it was fine before um i'm anxious actually to play with my new stamps after I get like the nine things that I have piled up in front of me painted. There, much better. <laughs> it's not so bright. The little mason jar thing is, I, I really like, I got onto that kick last year and did iced tea and sweet tea and a few things. And this time around, I'm just obsessed with anything with light. So I was playing with it the other night and I'm trying to figure out how to draw fireflies because it's not something you see up close very often. <laughs> So, and if you do, it's dark. Puppers are making out like gangbusters. Yes, the puppers are making out like gangbusters. That's, That's a great thir thing. Thir uh, Thirty dollars. Nice. We can add that to the <laughs> forty-five we got last week. The forty-five we got last. That's great. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Our our local shelter is uh, going to be receiving that at the end of the month. They get all we total everything up and send them off a uh, nice little chunk of change so they can. Do vet, pay veterinary bills or feed do whatever or, or feed the puppers or whatever they need for the local our local shelter. It's a no kill shelter, thankfully, um, and uh, it seems to be filling up a lot in the last little while. We still have two more to draw. Yeah, we still got two. Yeah, because Robin gave hers back. Yeah. Oh, she wants me to teach it. Okay. What? To do a Leander T as a live. That would be fun. That is the wrong. There it is. <laughs> Oops, Sue Potts donated as well, apparently. Did we miss one? Did we miss Sue? I didn't see Sue Potts. Huh. I think I'm in the wrong window. <laughs> Anywho, so yeah, yeah we're going to... Uh, we'll take care of the puppers. It's 50. Sue Potts donated 20 as well. Nice. Sue, thank you so much. So, our first name is boom becky underwood nice and then the last one is robin uh put it back into the wheel that was awfully generous thank you robin becky underwood <laughs> yep I haven't heard that name so that might be one that we might have to get them to contact us with the information. Yep, we will find out. Becky, if you're watching or still watching, please uh, um, go to the front page of my website. Click on the little speech bubble in the lower right-hand corner and uh, send us a message with your shipping information just in case we don't have it on file. Oh, Okay. It's um, $56.67. Nice. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> the dogs appreciate it. And the the, pup, the pup, puppers and the kitties. Yep. All right. For Robin's thing. I miss Hi. Debbie Matthews. You're late, my dear. <laughs> she says. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, and... We're new for Cheryl Neese. Nice. Cheryl. Cheryl Neese. K-N-E-C-E. -E, correct? No, just N-E-A-C-E. -E. Okay. Leave it to me to misspell it. Yeah, of all people. <laughs> I don't hit it at the park all the time. <laughs> As we have evidenced by the previous version of this. Oh, yeah? Mm. Yeah, no. It's terrible. Yeah, Cheryl Neath. Here we go. <laughs> Boom. Excellent. Hi, Tim. That's awesome. So our winners this week are Cheryl's. Debbie Matthews. Debbie Matthews. Becky Underwood. And Cheryl Neath. Cheryl Neath. Nice. There we go. Oh, and Becky Underwood. And Becky Underwood. Do Said we, that. Do we? Uh, I don't know. I'll ask. <sighs> <laughs> 
you'll be fine. My brain is not firing on all eight. You've only had one cup of coffee, that's why. I've had one cup of coffee, and for some reason, <laughs> I woke up this morning thinking I had to go to work. Uh-huh. Well, it's because you worked every day this week. <laughs> and I'm working every day next week. I know. So. Then the week after that, and the week after that. And, oh, I think next weekend I have to go get a blazer. Uh-huh. And some Oxfords. Ah, uh, yes. I got some events coming up. Yeah, he has to look spiffy. That's the other reason you got to go get that mop <laughs> on your face trimmed. <laughs> trimmed and styled. Tim, yeah, as long as you don't come home with braids or beads, no, we'll be okay. No, <laughs> we're not adding anything to the, the cacophony of... I could just see it. Little two little braids coming off there with the little beads on the end. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. Well, guys, that's it for us this weekend. Thanks so much for joining us. We love having you here every weekend. Uh, we do have lots of fun planned for you. Your new pattern will be up on Monday. So brace yourself. We have lots <laughs> coming up for you <laughs> next week. And we're carrying on with the sort of festive holiday theme for the month of July. So I hope you like Christmas stuff because that's what we're doing. More Christmas More stuff? More Christmas stuff. What? It's, it's July. It's July. Oh, Christmas in July. <laughs> Oh, really? Uh. And uh, don't forget, I am also teaching a uh, live for um, Artfully Connected on July 21st. And the project, uh, I'll post that up on my Facebook page as well. But project is we're doing hot cocoa. And that's a free class. The only thing you need to do is either pick up your surface and a pattern. And both of those are available on the website. We do have it as a kit, too. And it's discounted right now. So uh, the class is filling up really quick. So if you're interested, uh, come and join us on the 21st on Artfully Connected. And uh, next Saturday, more holiday stuff. You're going to have some fun with it. You'll like it. I promise. It's, is there more glitter? It's Christmas stuff. Uh, there's glitter. <laughs> he'll <laughs> live <laughs> he'll live <laughs> I promise you <laughs> alright guys thank you again so much for joining us every week we will see you next Saturday same place same bat channel okay you guys love ya oh, please our, stay one safe one of our newcomers has got a question okay Miss uh, Sandra Ryder hi Sandra what time are you here on Saturdays we are here every Saturday 12 noon Eastern Standard Time Alive and kicking. Alive and kicking. <laughs> and you are more than welcome to join us. Yeah. We'd love to have you. Okay, can <laughs> I say goodbye now? You want to say goodbye. bye? Again? <laughs> 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 love you guys. Please stay safe. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.